Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another edition of Authors on the Air. I'm your host today, James Latwell, and it's my pleasure to be with two authors that I respect their individual work, but we're going to have something new to talk about today in their collective work together. That's Lindy Walker and Bruce Robert Coffin. So hi, guys. How are you? Good. And how are you? Thanks for having us on, Joe. Absolutely. <laughs> my pleasure. For those of you who don't know, uh, let me just introduce uh, these two fine authors for you so you kind of have a uh, a little bit of what they're about, and then we can get into the the, the new book, which I, I think you're going to love. Uh, Lindy Walker writes about strong women who can't seem to stay out of trouble. Her books have appeared on finalist lists for the Agatha and Thriller Awards, and once on a major national bestsellers list, smack between two of her writing idols. An award-winning journalist, Lindy has covered everything from ribbon cut cuttings in high school football to capital murder trials and high-level police corruption. She's the, author, she's the author of 19 novels and three series, as well as several novellas and short stories. She's usually writing when she's not juggling laundry and children's sports schedules. So welcome, Lindy. Thank you so much for having us. My pleasure. And Bruce Robert Coffin is an award-winning novelist and short story writer, a retired detective sergeant. Bruce is the author of the By Detective Byron Mysteries and co-author of the Turner and Mosley Files with Lindy that we'll talk about today. And he's also the author of the forthcoming Detective Justice Mysteries, which should be fun. He's the winner of Killer Nashville's Civil Fashion Awards for Best Procedural and Best Investigator, and the Maine Literary Award for Best Crime Fiction. Bruce was also a finalist for the Agatha Award for Best Contemporary Novel, and his Anthony Award-nominated short fiction has been published in a dozen anthologies, including America's Best Mystery Stories in 2016. So welcome, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to be here. Yeah. Now I've read I've read your work individually before, <laughs> but you've come up with something really different this time. And for folks that haven't picked it up yet, we're talking about the general's gold. And it's it's a real departure for you guys. It's it's a really an action adventure uh piece. If you think of, you know, the best of you know Clive Cussler and, and maybe the Da Vinci Code it kind of has that feel to it. And you guys, I mean, pulled it off flawlessly. I mean, it's a beautiful, beautiful book. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's lofty company you have us in there. And we have had so much fun with these that it's it's sort of always nerve wracking, right? When a new book goes out for people to read it um, for the yeah. first time. And with these, we've been working on them sort of in secret for so long. And like, we're the only people who have seen it. And we're the only people who knew the characters for all this time. So it's been maybe a little more anxiety inducing, but so far everyone has said very nice things. So I'm excited to see. Yeah, you, you should be, you should be excited. And, let, and let's kind of talk about those characters for a minute. And Lindy, we'll start with you. Okay. Avery Turner is, is, uh, has a really unique relationship with, Harry. And how did they come together in the story? You know, it's funny when I first started thinking about just like an overview of what kind of cast, what kind of setup, what kind of appeal we wanted to have for this series. I was sort of, the, that started from, I wanted like multi-generational appeal. Like, I don't know if you guys watch Only Murders in the Building on Hulu, but Everybody in my family loves that show. From my seventh grader to my 75-year-old father-in-law, like everybody is really into that one. And that's kind of what I was going for was something that there would be something for everyone. And so when I started thinking about Avery and this young woman who had come into all of this money um, from through her intelligence and her ability with computers... And I wanted her to have a personal assistant. I didn't want a young woman in designer heels and a Donna Karen suit with an iPad. I wanted Alfred from Batman. And so that's sort of where Harry came from was, you know, Alfred from Batman. But then when Bruce signed on to um, co-author the series with me, all of a sudden, then I don't, Avery's mother was a police officer who had been killed in the line of duty. And so Harrison was mom's partner, who was sort of her surrogate uncle. And she had talked him into leaving the police force to, you know, maybe keep him around for a little longer and come be her assistant. And so that's how that all came about, because 
we all, you know, Bruce is a retired police officer. So I was like, oh, Bruce can write this character. And now <laughs> I can't, like, I'm sitting here writing about Harrison and I see Bruce in my head. So, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly that. And, and, and Bruce, let's talk about, about Harrison. You know, he has that great backstory and with your, with your history and your background. Um, but even more than that, some of the banter between Avery and Harrison, I could hear you, Bruce. I could hear you. I could hear you talk. So right. how, did you, how did you come up with that character? You know, he really just sort of invented himself once, once we started writing. I, I it just, I, I don't know. He just came to life so much easier. Um, I really wanted somebody that would have that um, uncle type presence in Avery's life. Um, and really, you know, they're, they're both doing something different. Like she's trying to discover what, what her life is now that she, you know, she can do anything she wants. She can buy anything she wants. She can go anywhere she wants, but why, what is she, what is the point of her being? And Harry um, really can't quite get his handle around this. You know, he's, he's done what he's done for so long. And all of those years in law enforcement are imprinted in his psyche. Um, the one thing that he came into this naturally with was being protective of her uh, and respectful of her. And, uh, you know, really, she's got him wrapped right around her, her little finger, which is he's, he's just a great character to write for that reason, I think. And so we, uh, Lindy and I had talked a lot about wanting to kind of play as long as we could with that uh, Harrison being protective of her, not really sure about Carter's intentions. And, you know, is he just another playboy or, you know, that kind of thing. And so we knew we could we could really stretch and, and mess around with that and, and have fun with it. So, you know, Carter uh, really kind of takes a beating uh, at the hands of, of Harry. Um, but but anyway, I mean, and you know, because you were in law enforcement for a long time yourself. Um, if we didn't love you, we wouldn't make fun of you. Uh, and that's kind of the thing. So, you know, there's a respect there that slowly will nurture. But. Um, yeah. you know, he's got the best lines, you know, we, junior mint, um, he calls him junior mint at one point, And, uh, that actually came from, uh, a conversation that I had with a retired Lieutenant. Um, and so there's, there's a lot of fun writing those characters. There's no question about it, but he's my favorite. I love them all, but I, I love him the best. Yeah, no, no, it comes through. It, it was, it was really fun to read. And that banter back and forth was just, was just great. Harry, Harry <clears throat> almost seems like a little bit of an anchor for Avery. It's kind of like her moral compass. She's quick to go off and 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 kind of and run, and he's kind of the one that puts on the brakes a little bit and says, "Let's think this through now a little," you know, kind of thing. So that was that was fun to see. Right. Yeah. He's her. Well, because he's her caution. You know, she spent her twenties sort of locked up in an office with a computer, not doing anything, and now she's able to be out in the world and go do and. She's sort of got a partner who's looking for adventure and Carter, who's kind of an adrenaline junkie and will jump faster than Avery will at stuff. So yeah, it's nice to have Harrison there to be that sort of voice of reason, like, Hey, you know, somebody could die. Maybe we should think about this for a minute. Um, yeah. And why don't we kind of dive in a little bit um, on the general's gold and maybe both of you can just kind of tell, tell us more about that story without giving too much away, but what that story is about and how, how they come together with Carter and kind of face a lot of different threats in, in the, over the course of the book. Well, we had uh, early on, we had talked about, uh, you know, a series where every time we turn around, they'll be going someplace different, new and exotic. Mm -hmm. And we thought, well, if we're going to introduce fans to this and, and really let's be honest, it's new for us to write this. Let's focus on the things we know. And so Lindy now being from Virginia and I'm from Maine, we had the entire East Coast we're pretty familiar with, but that was it. And so we said, all right, well, let's write a book that really encompasses that. And so the hunt will take place largely there. And um, what was chosen for this particular book from a historical perspective was the Revolutionary War. And there's a treasure that starts in the Revolutionary War era and then it also kind of progresses into the Civil War of the U.S. So there's a lot of historical things. And, and being the East Coast, that's where everything happens. You know, I mean, that's really our, the oldest part of our entire country. So all the things you can imagine that might take place with somebody trying to send, uh, you know, wealth over here to the U.S. for either nefarious purposes or otherwise, um, everybody's going to be in the, in the middle of trying to, to get a piece of that or to try to intercept it. 
and that doesn't go away as the as the centuries pass. That doesn't go away. So that really was the kind of the basis of what we wanted to do, and and uh, it was a lot of fun. There's a lot. Of, I mean, we we play with the historical stuff, and we stretch that like it was silly putty. Um, but there's always you know a basis for the kind of the stuff that we write, and so there's a lot. There's still a lot of research even when you're you're writing historical fiction. But yeah, it was a lot of fun doing that. That's great. Yeah. Yeah. That's fantastic. So how did this this dream team come together? I mean, individually, you know, Bruce, you know, I love the Detective Byron mysteries and Lindy, the, the Faith McClellan series. It's one of my favorites. How did this kind of brings the best of both worlds together? But how did this whole thing come together for you guys? Um. So I was having a little bit of trouble with uh you if you read my faith books you know they're they're a little dark um the stories and the subject matter and uh having to sort of come up with a new way for a serial killer to inventively cut people up and have a good reason for it about every six months was starting to wear on me a little bit um and i wanted something that was more fun and lighter to write about to break those up and um it actually, we, I went to a reader conference, Malice Domestic. It was the first Malice back after COVID. And I heard from a lot of readers, like, I, I want to read about fun, you know, adventure, mystery solving. Like, I'm tired of reading about trailer parks and meth labs and very dark, depressing things. And so I went, well, maybe this idea that I have about these people hunting treasure is not so crazy. Um, I mentioned it to my agent. They mentioned it to the publisher. And then the publisher said, let's, you know, you don't, basically I got told you have too many ideas and not enough time. And you don't have time to do this with your current contractual obligations. But if you really want to work on this, let's see if we can find a co-author who can build a series with you from the ground up and y'all can work everything together, build the characters together. And um, Bruce's agent had sent a list to the publishing house of authors who were interested in a co-authoring situation. So I got forwarded the list. I saw Bruce's name on it and went, hey, I know Bruce. He's my friend and I've read his Byron books and they're really good. So I know he has talent. So let's talk to Bruce. And we managed to convince him to come on board here. <laughs> it only took four months. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it was yeah. a while of back and forth, yeah. but it we was, did. Yeah, it was. Well, I mean, Lindy and I kind of did our thing all along. We, you know, early on, uh, she sent me notes for the first two chapters. Well, really the prologue in the first chapter and, uh, and I said, well, let's try this. Let's see if we can, you know, let's see if you even like what I write. You know, give me your idea of what it's going to be. And then I just kind of had at it. And uh, she loved what I wrote. It was great. And uh, we, we did a lot of talking after that. So, but it is it is such a weird thing. Like, you know, you know, you just try to picture yourself, Jim. You're established already. People know you for certain type of writing, certain style of writing. Um and then all of a sudden, you know, in my case, it worked out perfectly because my series had been ended by Harper. They didn't want to put out the fifth book. So I was really floundering and trying to write that standalone thriller. Um, I think I started seven or eight of those, actually. So <laughs> I've, got, I've got a bunch of stuff for later on. There you go. Um, but yeah, but I really, you know, it was the perfect timing. And I, I wanted to do something that was a little different. The thriller, uh, for me, there was a, a more of a thriller aspect of what what Lindy and, and uh, Andrew Watts and those guys were, were bringing forward. And uh, Paula thought it would be a, a good fit. And, um, you know, like I say, it took some convincing, but Karen was all in early on. Paula was all in. My wife, Karen, Paula, uh, when you my, my agent was all in. And, and I think Lindy was all in. So it was just kind of trying to bring me around. And I'm glad I did. I mean, honestly, um, I had no idea it would be this much fun. Uh, you know, I, it, they're all a lot of work. There's no easy way to write a novel, as you know. But um, Lindy's been great to work with. Uh, the whole process has been uh, second to none. And uh, if nothing else comes out of this, it lets me know that I can write something beyond the procedural, which I, which I really started to think that was going to be all I do. So it's nice to know that you can kind of branch out and still have a lot of fun uh, writing. Yeah, absolutely. That's, that's I great. Mean, 
it's been, we've had such a good time with these and it's been so much fun to work with Bruce. And he really, he was nervous at the beginning. He said, I don't know if I can do what you're looking for. Cause I've never tried to do anything like this before. And I, it was two summers ago. I was picking up my son from basketball camp and I got an email from him that said, okay, look at this and see what you think. And I'm like reading on my phone and then basketball camp pick up line going, yes, this is. And I was like texting Andrew at the publishing house. Like, this is what we want. I want Bruce. Let's do this. So, um, it's been, we've had such a good time with them. Like they've just, they That's get more and more fun with these books. That's and great. She's a bottomless nope. well of ideas. Let's be honest. You know what I mean? <laughs> Lindy is the idea champion. It's just unbelievable. You know, I'll see the stuff in it and it's catching. Like you, you just can't help it. I'll, you know, I'll be reading stuff and I'm like, all right, well, let's throw something else in here, you know, but the ideas, wow. they never stop. They don't. Know? I thought everybody's wow. brain worked like this until right. when I started working on this. I was like, doesn't everyone have a thousand ideas when they're working on a book and have to put them in a different file? Right. Uh, that's always the scariest part for me is like, is that well going to dry up? I mean, right. you know, it's, it's, yeah. It's just, now, oh, we've all read books written by author teams, co-authors, and some of them you can tell who wrote what and, you know, that kind of thing. But this, General's Gold is kind of seamless. You can't pick out that there are two authors. It's kind of just one voice that kind of permeates the whole the whole work. How did you make that happen? Because that's that's a trick. It's magic. It's magic. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we I think we came about this. I, I think we came about this accidentally the way we were going to do this, but some of it wasn't by accident. I mean like Lindy's, this was Lindy's idea, this series, you know, she it was her impetus and she, she took this and ran with it and wanted to create the situation and the characters. And as we, as we flesh things out further and she continued to plot out the first book, um, you know, the, the storyline was there. So it was really getting to know the characters, getting to know the interplay, getting to know, you know, how we were going to work together. And really because she had already done all that work, um, it just became naturally that, all right, well, give me the, give me the plot and I'll write the book. And so what we do is I, I'll take, now that I've tr learned to do this, I was afraid to do anything different than what she had written down to begin with. I was really nervous about going off the page, but she kept hammering into me, just write your book. Here's the notes, here's the recipe, write your book. So that's how the books have been done. So when she gets the manuscript back, it's, you know, it's, it's a, it's better than a first draft, but it's, it's manuscript she hasn't seen. So any changes that I've made, she's going to give a real reaction to it because it's the first time she's ever seen it. And, and then she'll start making, you know, the, the changes to make the book, to flesh things out, to put really the way she writes into a lot of the stuff that I've written. So I, I think it becomes seamless just because the way we do it is, is that it's not stealing chapters and, she does one or I do one or, you know, we'd swap characters. It's, it's actually one story told by uh, or outlined by one writer. The story's told by another writer. And then we, we make the tweaks and stuff that make it ours. And uh, it's, it's, it's a great way to write. I think it works, you know. Yeah, I, it's magic. You're right. It, it's magic. <laughs> it, it does work. It really does work. Now, you guys are on an aggressive public publication schedule for this. I mean, Bruce, I remember sitting down with you at, at Killer Nashville and you kind of told me what the schedule was going to look like. And it's like, I'm never going to see Bruce again. You know, he's going <laughs> <he's gonna> to disappear. <laughs> but you've got the, the General's Goal coming out now. You've got the Cardinal's Curse in June. And I think you said the Pirate Secret is, Secret is coming out in October. Yes. I mean, how did you guys manage this kind of an aggressive schedule um, and can you tease us a little bit on what, uh, maybe what's to come in the Cardinal's curse? Sure. Um, I'm not pointing the right way. There we go. <laughs> He's pointing at me. Okay. So we, it's been, I mean, that's part of it is that, yes, we worked very fast on these and Bruce has been just a champion at turning around drafts in like 90 days after we get an approved outline for him to work from, but we've been stacking this up. I mean, we started working on this two summers ago, so it's been almost two years mm -hmm. to get the first book out, which is kind of slow, even by publishing industry standards. So we're both like to finally see it and have the launch date be next week and hold copies of it in our hands has been really, really fun. 
with this book. Um, so they had, we finished the first two and then had the third one almost done before they set the publication dates so that we'd be sure that we could meet that rapid release schedule. And it's sort of, you know, cause we've all gotten used to binging TV shows on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And so they, the publishers are, a lot of them are experimenting with this sort of stack up a series and do the rapid release. So readers don't have to wait so long for the first three or four books in a series. Um, and, the, and the Cardinal's Curse, that one we had just so much fun with. So yes, we started in General's Gold with keeping them on the East Coast and sort of this domestic setting so we could get into the characters, get our feet wet at the adventure mystery, because of course there has to be a murder mystery. Like how does Avery get into treasure hunting? Because her friend was killed and the police think he killed himself and she doesn't. And he was hunting for this treasure and that's how he got himself killed. And so, you know, or maybe it is, maybe it's not. She's racing along trying to figure out. Um, so then in the Cardinal's Curse, they've, you know, they found this legendary treasure and now they've sort of gotten themselves a reputation and gotten a little bit internet famous for that particular thing. And they get to go all kinds of places. We sent them to Antarctica, um, as part of a scientific expedition, uh, that turned into a treasure hunting expedition. And then they go from there, where do they go? They go to, uh, uh they go to Den is it Denmark or Norway? they go to Denmark remember. they yeah. go to UK. um New Zealand right yeah. and when they leave Antarctica yeah, they go right. to New Zealand they go to Argentina. Yeah. Argentina like I mean it's just so fun to research all these places and she's got a private jet so they can just call the pilot and be like we're going here and he comes to get them <laughs> it's really fun that's neat the research no, you... I mean it's crazy because you can do I mean think the things we can do now that you know, you used to actually have to get on a plane and go someplace to right. see any of these things. And, you know, researching like the uh, research stations in Antarctica and, mm -hmm. you know, being able to tour them on a YouTube video or a program that was shot about them, just like walking through. You know, right. I, I, mean, I can see what color everything is. I can see how people are dressed. You know, it's, it's a lot of fun. So it's easy to bring those to life. Um, even when you're writing about, you know, sub-zero conditions, on your sweltering hot summertime deck as you're writing. Um, it's really weird because mentally I'm there, you know, and then yeah. I realize after I'm writing, my God, I'm sweating. This is crazy, you know, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's, it is a lot of fun, you know. Thank God for That's Google deep. Street View. Right. Um, <laughs> I can stand in the middle of the street at this place and look around and see what's there. Um, That's great. Um, well, well, we're running uh, time here. So I'm going to, end with what I'm, what I'm calling three quick hits. And that's three quick questions about your character. Um, Lindy, will have you talk about Avery and, and Bruce, how about you take, take Harry mm -hmm. and just tell me what is that character's favorite cocktail? A margarita. Anything with, with Harrison's either single malt or maybe a nice IPA, something along those lines. Okay. How about that character's favorite music? Avery likes classic rock and maybe a little bit of old country too. Harry would be into jazz. Really? Okay. Because I'm into jazz. Uh, that's, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> I, I figured it might be that. that right. <laughs> and the, the last question is, what is that character's biggest fear? I think wasting her time was is probably Avery's biggest fear she she likes to do things and and make use of every minute I could see Harry's that. biggest fear would be uh something happening to Avery oh, God. he would never forgive himself Very good yeah makes perfect sense this has been a lot of fun you guys have been great yes it has, yeah. yes, it has. We're, we've been talking about the general's gold it's the new release coming from Lindy Walker and Bruce, Bruce Robert Coffin it's action adventure at its best, folks. You're gonna you want to get go get your copies now and check this out. It's uh, it's fantastic, and you guys have really done yourselves well. Congratulations on the new release. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you so much. All right, take care, everyone. Thank you.